Well hey there, you're on the internet. I had surgery on the back of my head two days ago. And welcome to the Triple N Network, where all you newbie nib nerds can find all the news you'll need. Let's look at an ink today, shall we? Now today's ink was provided by the wonderful Mysterious Penefactor. It's by Levengers. Came in the sample set. And uh, as I've explained in the past, the way this works is you get one cartridge, which is essentially half a milliliter of ink, of each of the inks. Uh, except for Cobalt and Raven Black. And today's ink is Regal, which is sort of their royal purple. So it's sort of like a dark, rich purple with some hints of blue in it. Uh, I actually was quite enjoying this ink. Uh, however, as was the case with some of these Lavender inks in the past, I was so busy enjoying it that I was like, oh, crap, I'm going to run out. I have to put it aside so that I don't run out before I do my tests. So it sat in the pen for a couple days, and that has caused some problems. So, yeah, it, the performance was better when it was fresh. So, rather like detrimentous in that sense, that the longer it's in the pen, the worse the performance gets. So, some grains of salt with these tests coming up. I uh, thought I'd compare it to a few other inks. As you can see, here's Levenger's Regal up at the top. It's a very, yeah, it's a, it's a royal purple. You know, it has some hints of blue in it, but it's a deep, rich purple. I don't actually have many purples similar to this, so I <laughs> had some trouble finding comparisons. But here's Diamine's Imperial Purple, which you can see is much lighter, uh, n not nearly as saturated. Levenger inks do tend to be very saturated. Uh, Noodler's Violet, which is, yeah, I'd say more violet. It has a bit more pink in it. Noodler's Purple Martin, which again, kind of has a bit of a woolly texture and it is a bit lighter. And Noodler's Kung to Chang which is definitely more blue, but uh, definitely purple still. So, yeah, all the tests were done in the Schaefer VFM, which uh, is the only Schaefer that I know of that takes standard international. But yeah, it only comes in one size, which is a medium. Uh, this pen has always been very moderate, you know, medium size, medium flow in that regard. Let's check out the chromatography. Here's how you're supposed to do chromatography, where you put a bit of ink, instantly dunk it in water. As you can tell, there's a lot of blue in this ink, uh, at least at the very, very base. And then you go into sort of a lighter purple and then a much darker purple. And you can see just how saturated it is by how much is gathering up at the top. And here I let it dry, which is not how you're supposed to do it. But yeah, pretty much the only difference is the dot got darker and there's less in between the heavy saturated band up at the top in the middle. So, Paper test, top down in density, Clairefontaine, 90 grams per square meter. Yeah, it's a deep, rich purple. It's quite beautiful. Uh, it took 12 seconds to dry, which is not so bad for such a saturated ink and very hydrophobic paper. There is shading. As you can see, it can get kind of dark. And, uh, yeah. Uh, <coughs> sorry. Being intubated did no, no, no good deeds for my throat. But, uh... Yeah, there were some problems. Um, as you can see, there's some feathering. There's uh, some near bleed in places. Uh, starts coming through, nearly coming through in a few spots, which it did not do when it was fresh. When this ink was fresh, it, it was much more well behaved, as tends to be the case with several of these lavender inks. So something to be aware of. Um, yeah, mo fresher, mo better, I guess. But yeah, so there was a bit of feathering. There was some near bleed. Uh, one of the things about ink being so saturated is a lot of times when you add water, you're just sort of going to spread it around, which is definitely the case. It made a mess. It's hard to read what was at the center, and it did feather a good bit. It sort of explodes, so. Next is Rhodia, 80 grams per square meter, where again, you can see that sort of pleasant shading. It is very nice, and again, it took 12 seconds to dry. But again, we're having some problems. There's some near bleed in several spots. Now the light is quite powerful, but hopefully you'll still be able to see it. It's nearly coming through in a few spots, which it did not do when it was fresh. So, and there is some feathering. Again, it sort of tends to be around the edges. Uh, it's not easy to see, but it is there. Uh, like the eye and boxing, things like that. It does crop up. Something to be aware of. Uh, water test was actually not bad. Uh, it did dye the page a bit. You can see what's at the center, but it did sort of feather and explode, so something to be aware of. 
Next is Tomoe River paper, where Tomoe River tends to really bring out the uh, the most uh, I don't know severe shading. So it shades as much as it's ever going to shade anywhere, essentially, which you can definitely see. Definitely drew out dry times, another thing that Rodeo, uh, Tomoe River paper does. Ooh. Wonderful rich purple. I was so sure that this was going to sheen on this paper, because that's another thing that this does. If it's going to sheen, it'll sheen here. The problem is, you know, this is a very moderate pen. It doesn't put down a lot of ink. I'm confident that this would sheen on this paper if the ink was fresher and if the uh, flow was a little wetter, if you had a wetter pen. But I couldn't bring it out here. Now, Tumbleway River is very rare to see any bleed feather spread, and we don't. So that's very nice. Finally, no bleed feather spread. However, this ink is fairly dark and this paper is fairly thin. So if you're very sensitive to that, that's something you should be aware of. There is a bit of an echo problem. Or not problem, but something to be cautious of. But yeah, it's uh... Tomoe River also loves to let ink slide away when you add more water, and here it definitely made a mess. It turned it very purple, and it is hard to read what's at the center, but if you absolutely had to recover that, I think you probably could. Next is the world's worst copier paper, where it lost all shading. I feel like it lost some of its richness of color, too. I'm not sure that's something that'll come through on camera, but yeah, it took one second to dry, and despite this being a fairly moderate pen, it bled a great deal. Now, I don't use a lot of copier paper, so I don't know if this would have been quite this bad when the ink was fresh. I can't recall, but yeah, that's pretty bad. And as you can see, there is a lot of feathering and a lot of bleed, and there's a good deal of spread. If you look at the line width of the writing here versus here, it got much broader. Now, this is much more absorbent paper, so it tends to suck the ink in, and when you add more water, it's harder to wash out. So, yeah, I guess what's at the center is still very much there, but what's around it, it's just, that's terrible. That's hard to read. Next is me notebook paper, which, though it generally outperforms this 20-pound copier paper, the paper itself is actually much thinner. So, yeah, the fact that this ink was so misbehaving, it, it, there's no shock that it nearly bled through and where it didn't, the echo... I mean, it did fully bleed through in spots, and then everywhere else, it's, you know, show through is very severe. It took two seconds to dry. Again, I feel like some of the depth of, of the vibrancy was robbed. There's a great deal of feathering, there's a great deal of bleed. There's some spread, not as much as a 20 pound copier paper, but some. It exploded. That's hard to read. It made a mess. Uh, mm, not great. And lastly is moleskin paper, which is terrible. It's awful. And yet it didn't do quite as bad as I thought. It did very bad, but not as bad as I thought it was going to. Uh, as you can see, there is a great deal of wooliness and feathering and not goodness. And it took six seconds to dry, which I cannot explain because this is very absorbent paper. Yeah, there's bleed, there's feather, there's spread, there's no shading, but it's not full-blown cactus everywhere the way it can be sometimes. So that's what I was expecting with this ink, but I didn't get it. However, this paper does react very badly with water, so I wish you the best of luck in trying to <laughs> recover something like that. And uh, yeah, even with the strong light coming in this direction, you can see all of that. In fact, it got onto the page underneath. So there you go. There's uh, Levenger's Regal. It's uh, a wonderful dark, rich, royal purple on uh, premium papers. It looks lovely. When it's fresh, it's much more well-behaved. Uh, so something to be aware of. But uh, yeah, for your consideration from the Triple N Network, if you liked the video, please give it a thumbs up. If you'd like to see more, please subscribe to the channel. And thanks for watching. Bye.